You know, the challenge is you got to rebuild with a lot of new players who will be younger, uh, have new roles, less experience. And how do they respond, you know, to these new roles? And I've been pleased so far with the way our players have embraced the new roles, the new responsibilities. We're going to be a work in progress. And that's going to be critical to our success. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Nick Saban Show brought to you by TruckWorks along with the head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide. I'm Chris Stewart. Coach, congratulations on a 59-3 victory over New Mexico State. Well, I was really proud of the way our guys you know, came out and played with good energy and enthusiasm in this game. That's been something that's been a little bit inconsistent for us. So I really challenged our team this week to, uh, hey, the opponent's faceless. You're all about creating value for yourself. There is no scoreboard. Um, let's everybody go out there and, you know, be a team. Think about the team. Do what's best for the team. Don't worry about yourself. Uh, be responsible to do your job. Be positive. Challenge other people to do their job. And I, I really like that energy and chemistry that we had on the field today. A lot of players got to play, uh, which was a good thing. But the other players were very supportive of them when they played. So that was all great. You somewhat referenced this at the beginning, Coach, but everybody loves to run out of the tunnel on Saturdays. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of game week for games like this can be a bit of a challenge. Well, it can. Uh, I think especially when you play like five or six, you know, SEC games, which are big games that have, you know, tremendous consequences. And when you play these games early in the season, the players are still trying to improve, you know, for the season. But... You know, later in the season, it's it's a little more difficult, but I, I thought our guys were great today. Let's take a look, Coach, at the first half highlights. Ethan Albertson. A 45-yard kick against Utah State is his long for the year. This is a 50-yard try. It's on the way. It is good. A 50-yard field goal by Ethan Albertson. Here's a first and 10 from midfield for Alabama. Bryce Waits claps his hands. Play action fake and a throw wide open left side. Caught and with his speed, no. He's going to catch Jamison Williams. Touchdown, Alabama. 50 yards. Goes Mechie. Set back. Robinson to the right of the quarterback. Looking, throwing into the end zone. Touchdown, Latu. Cameron Latu using his size to make a nice grab of 12 yards overhead of Dylan Early. Josh Carlson, pressure, it is partially blocked, it goes high in the air, comes down into the grass for the Crimson Tide, and Jalen Moody takes it in, inside the five-yard line to the four. Backs are in the eye, Uts is the up man, here's the give, Robinson, second effort, touchdown Alabama, second effort. Brian Robinson, and he'll pick up his 13th rushing touchdown of the year. Kendall Randolph checks back in. Two wides right, one left. Play action fake again. Got a pressure. Wide open. End zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Royce just waited and waited, and all of a sudden, Jamison Williams parted the defense and picks up a 32-yard reception for another Alabama touchdown, his second of the day. First and 10 from the 37. Inside give Robinson. Cuts left Robinson. He sees the end zone ahead of him. He's on his high horse and gone. Touchdown Alabama. 63 yards for Brian Robinson. Four to Mexico State. Empty backfield. Three wides left. Two to the right side. Quarterback stands out. Fakes. Throws it across the middle. 
catch made by Warner. He gets hit, lost the ball, and it is picked up by Alabama. The Crimson Tide, and now the umpire says Alabama ball. Bryce surveys the defense. He'll yell to Jamison Williams, who will acknowledge. Again, a snap on the ground, but the throw to the end zone. Touchdown, Williams. Wide open, Jamison, seven yards for another touchdown. Now second and goal from the five. Again, Bryce looks, throws. That one is caught on the left side for the touchdown by Billingsley. They came back to him, and that was nice. It'll be a five-yarder. Forty-nine to three at the half, coach, and your quarterback really set the tempo. Well, Bryce, I think it was thirteen for thirteen to start with, and ended up like twenty-one for twenty-three, and had five touchdown passes. But I think even more importantly, as we had great balance on offense in the first half, you know, got B. Rob going a little bit, we we're able to run the ball more effectively. Um, after that first drive, where they did a couple different motions and things that we messed up. Uh, the defense got settled down and played really, really well and shut them down. So uh, I was pleased at halftime. I told the players we're going to go out in the second half and start with the first group so we get out of the gate. And then after that, we're going to play a lot of players. But the expectation would be that those players would play to the same standard that we wanted our starters to play with. And I was pretty pleased with what they did. We'll take a look at those highlights when we come back here on the Nick Saban Show. The Nick Saban Show is brought to you by the University of Alabama, where legends are made. And by Coca-Cola, together tastes better. Coach, in these second half highlights, we're going to see a lot of new faces. Yeah, well, today victory was a little costly from the standpoint of, you know, Roy Dell uh, and JoJo. Uh, I don't know how long they'll be out, but pretty significant injuries. Um, so it was really important that we got a chance to play some of the young running backs that we've not had an opportunity to play. Uh, and a lot of different offensive linemen got a chance to play. We played a lot of players on defense. And I, I was pleased with the way they played. You know, a lot of times when you put guys, you know, things go helter-skelter. And But, you know, we played four different quarterbacks. They all did a pretty good job. They all contributed to a drive. Uh, so that was really good. I, I was really, really pleased that we were able to do that. I hope we can carry this momentum forward. Let's take a look at those second half highlights. Coach, a great win, 59-3. to Also really neat to see some legacy guys out there. Jay Barker's son, Braxton, getting in at quarterback. Coach Bryant's great-grandson and Paul Tyson seeing the field as well is pretty special. Well, you know, it's also special to have guys like that. You call them legacy guys, that they're, they have, they understand the passion and the tradition of Alabama football, and it means so much to sure. them. So uh, it's always great to see them do well and have an opportunity to play. I was so happy to put Jay in. You know, he's a scout team quarterback, all right? So he gets killed every week and gets no positive self-gratification for it. And he even got to complete a pass today. All right, so that was great. That was absolutely great. But I was also, you know, Jamo Williams had a great day today. Um, made a lot of explosive plays. We had great balance on offense. Uh, they almost 
gained 37 yards in the second half and we were playing a lot of players. So I, I was really pleased with the total performance of the total team and how we competed today. 59-3 again, the final Bama winner over New Mexico State. We've got more coming up. Stay with us right here on the Nick Saban Show. The Nick Saban Show is brought to you by Tiffin, Tiffin Motorhomes, made to move you. And by Affleck. Get to know us at Affleck.com. Coach, what was the turning point for you today? Well, I think when we got a stop, uh, and they kicked the field goal, and then we went and scored on seven consecutive drives in the first half. So I don't know which one of those were the most important, but I think to take control of the game that way is certainly the turning point in this game. you got a guy on your staff this year in Todd Watson who's taken a really neat path, former high school coach of Julio's, college ranks, and now special assistant to the head coach here in Tuscaloosa. Well, and Todd does a really good job for us because he does a lot of work on special teams, which is what he did when he was at Tennessee. Uh, but it's really important for us because Todd has a great reputation, he's a great person, uh, and the high school coaches in the state really respect him. And I think that's really important for us to get good information on players that we want to recruit uh, and have the high school coaches in the state feel welcome and at home that one of theirs is here on our staff. Let's go Mercedes-Benz All Access with Todd Watson. I grew up in, uh, born in Gadsden, but really grew up in Mobile, Alabama. So from this state, um, went to, to high school, I actually graduated from Baldwin County High School in, in Bay Minette, and um, went on and played college baseball at the University of Mobile, Mike Jacobs, and then got right back into coaching. You know, my, my dad was a high school coach in the state for years, and um, that's what I wanted to do, and, and uh, just joined in his footsteps right after college. I married uh, a Christy Mallory, you know, Christy Mallory Watson, and we've been married for 27 years now. Got two children, two girls. Um, Lee Ashton Watson is um, 26. She's a uh, elementary teacher in Huntsville area. And my youngest daughter, Micah, is a freshman here at the University of Alabama. Growing up in this state, you, you understand the, the pride and the history and the tradition, and, and then now having an opportunity to work here and work alongside Coach Saban um, is it, truly a blessing. It's, it's something that uh, don't take for granted. Um, it's something that, that you uh, respect for the university and for the football program of Coach Saban that you're going to go out and you're going to do your best every day to add to that legacy that's here. Being a special assistant to Coach Saban, um, it, it involves really a, a myriad of things. Um, I do everything from um, gathering information and, and doing analytical stuff um, to um, also working with the high school coaches uh, throughout the state as, as a liaison and kind of a, a, a relations type deal. Being a high school coach in this state for 22 years, I um, have been fortunate enough to, to build a lot of relationships with, those, with, with several of the coaches across the state and um, enjoy that part of it and, and making sure that they feel welcome at the University of Alabama and um, they, they have access to what we provide here. I've been very fortunate to, to have been part of some great teams, some great players. Um, even going back to my time at Hoover with Josh Chapman and John Parker Wilson and then at Foley with Julio Jones and DJ Fluker and Robert Lester. Um, and, and all those guys were, were guys that were great young men. Um, they fit the mold of, of what Alabama is looking for and they came here and had, all of them had a success. Um, and, and, and you know even have moved on into the NFL and had some good success in the NFL. So it was a, a joy working with those young men. Um, and I was glad to see them come here and get the development that they got here at the University of Alabama and had an opportunity to go on and play in the NFL. The fans here at Alabama are, are some of the most passionate um, throughout the country, you know. Football was the one thing that, that people in the state gravitated to. And that, that fan base, you know, has never changed. They're, they're always a loyal fan base that's very passionate about their team and very supportive of their team and, uh, and their school. And uh, that's, that's, that's a special thing. That doesn't happen everywhere. And the passion here is, is probably much greater than it is in, in many other parts of the country. And uh, that's what makes it special. We really enjoy that. Time for our Play of the Game Coach, brought to us by CBNS Bank. 
Well, you know, this is what we call our cross package where we play, you know, three safeties in the deep part of the field to try to disguise, you know, some of the things that we're doing. A lot of times we can eight drop out of this and play multiple coverages. Uh, but Brian Branch, who's really the guy that's always on the fourth receiver, lines up in the middle. Um, he's what we call the money guy. But this is actually a pressure. We have two choices, you know, here in the coverage is Malachi can come up and play this guy and either lock it or do what we call top hat and take the back guy. Uh, they play push alert here, uh, which means uh, Jordan Battle is going to take the guy that goes behind the other guy, one behind two. Uh, the two corners are playing man-to-man -man outside. DeMarco's in the middle of the field. And I'm going to show you the stunt uh, on uh, close-up. Uh, this is a stunt where uh, he's going to go to the back. He's going to hit the A-gap. 14's actually going to come and read the slide of the center. If the center goes this way, he's going in this gap. Um, and then Henry's going to go outside, so you got 15 and 10. So they got two for two. Uh, and um, whichever way the center slides, they either got to squeeze to pick up 14, all right, which they do, and then 10's free. If they don't squeeze, 14 has a chance to be free. Now, they can block this if the back was on 14, uh, but most of the time they don't count him into pr protection because he lines up 10 yards deep. So that was one of the sacks right before the field goal, which stopped uh, their first drive. The Nick Saban Show is brought to you by Trust Mark, people you trust, advice that works. Coach, I love our player spotlight where we get a chance to hear you talk about some of your tremendous young men, such as new linebacker Henry To'o To. Well, Henry's a good one. Um, he's a great person. Uh, but one thing he's done for our team is he's a, a very good signal caller. He can make adjustments. He can make calls. He, he helps everybody around him play better. He's got some real leadership qualities about him. Uh, and he's instinctive out there playing. He's got a great family. I just love, I love having him in the program. I was sick all right, when we didn't get him in recruiting, but I'm really happy he's here now. I got his last name right once. I'm not going to roll the dice a second <laughs> time. Let's spend more time learning about Henry. Uh, Henry Toto, linebacker, Sacramento, California. I chose to come to Alabama because definitely the culture, um, Coach Saban, uh, and I had a past relationship throughout high school. When I was getting recruited here, so that was kind of huge for me. I'm big, I'm big on relationships, um, big family guy, and just being able to come here and better myself. Uh, I knew the culture, I knew that Coach Saban and the coaches around here, and even the players um, are going to push me every single day to not only be good off the field but on the field. Definitely been a blessing, honestly. You know, you come into a new program and you meet guys and you never know what your role is going to be. Um, you never know um, how the team's going to react, how the coach is going to react. So it's honestly been a blessing to have the guys trust me, to be able to be that signal caller, um, to be the guy that they look at um, for advice, even off the field. Um, so, you know, I take it really serious. Um, I love the guys and I appreciate them. So it's an honor. You know, not a lot of people can put that jersey on, not a lot of people can wear the A. Um, a lot of hard work goes into it, um, a lot of dedication. Um, so it's honestly a blessing and an honor to be able to, you know, have the A on my chest. My family. Um, my family is the most important thing and um, Heavenly Father God. We went to church every Sunday and through church, you know, family has became uh, my most important rock. Coming from the Polynesian culture too, um, we're raised upon family. Um, so everything that I do, everything that I try to carry myself, I try to, you know, represent my family well, um, open doors for them, so that when it's their turn, they're able to, you know, take advantage of that. You know, I would first off like to thank the fans, you know, for for everything that you guys do for us as a team. Um, definitely the energy that you guys bring is huge. We love it. We appreciate you guys so much, um, and we look forward to having you guys for the rest of the season. The Nick Saban Show is brought to you by Tiffin. Tiffin Motorhomes, made to move you. Can't believe we're talking about Senior Day being what's next, Coach, but it's a really good Arkansas team that'll come in for a 2.30 kick. 
Yeah, well, we appreciate all the seniors have done for the program while they've been here. They have a pretty phenomenal record. Um, but our focus has really got to be on getting ready for a very good Arkansas team. I mean, they're ranked in the country. They're 6-3. and three. Um, they, they are probably as much improved as a team as anyone I've seen this year. Uh, we've got some really good players. Uh, they're doing a great job on offense. Uh, they play a little different kind of defense, which is a challenge for you. So, so this is a big game for us, no doubt, and we've got to be ready to go. Coach, thank you for the time as always. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week right here on the Nick Saban Show, brought to you by Truck Works. The Nick Saban Show is brought to you by Coca-Cola, together tastes better. By the University of Alabama, where legends are made. And by Trustmark, people you trust, advice that works.